your review or give your thought on this? Uh, no, I think it was, it was good. I had a lot of, um, picked out a lot of elements in the, each page to use. Um, I used uh, ma uh, name entity recognizer techniques and DB Spotlight and used those to search Wikipedia for more information on the entities. And then um, that stores useful information is metadata. So just before, let me ask one question. Uh, did this uh, submitter pick up the issue about exploiting the structure of the news ML? So, uh, for yeah. example, CBC, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think that was the, perhaps reasonably well done. Really well, right? was telling, you mentioned Wikipedia Spotlight. Uh, how many of you know what that is? Okay, so you want to explain how uh, has this uh, submitter uh, talked about using this Spotlight? Uh, it's here, right? This is where, as an example here, right? You can use it. So, so who wants to explain this? Um, the, you know, the possibility of uh, annotating using gate versus Wikipedia Spotlight. The, the, these things are thrown here. Tell me, what is the distinction? What what difference would it make? How would it be different? How? What is so? What is fundamentally different between using gate? If there's a whole class of system like gate for any R vis a vis will be a spotlight. Isn't gate more like an NLP technique yeah. versus spotlight being a more semantic tool? Yeah. Semantic, just look up mostly. Yes. Just, just look up the video, right? Right. So, uh, so what what does it? What is the impact of that then? If some search engine used gate, vis a vis and other search engine used the um, video spotlight to do any other. Uh, and annotation in general of entities, what would be, how would they be different? What are the pros and cons? It's not just pros, I just, one is not necessarily superior in all contexts to the other, I think. So what it is? Who wants to explain? This ambiguation would be one of the keys to the entity. Right, but before you even get to this ambiguation, just any ER recognition as an entity, a specific type. What can you achieve with gate? What is it that you can achieve with gate that you can't achieve with news You can know that it's a noun, a potential concept. You parse mm -hmm. the sentence out. Mm -hmm. It's based on NLP. Maybe spot. Maybe spot. Basically, you can. It means you can. Uh, you, you can identify ability type of entities. Mm -hmm. So far as so far as there is a linguistic. Um, aspect to it that you can program in gate, right? It may be a simple thing, it may be, um, uh, so, so with the gate and with uh, Stanford NLP toolkit and number of other things, 
you can find a lot of different kinds of text. You, you, you can have a tool that parses the text. You can do the, uh, uh, the, uh, 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 tagging of those things, of the type, right? And then you can say what kind of entity there is, except the fact that you can only get a shallow semantic feature out of it, right? You won't be able to tell, you know, using gay, that this person is a sportsman. Right? You see the difference? How does it relate to other And how does it relate to other entities? You won't be able to say that either. But you may be able to say this is the name of a person that you can probably say, tell you about. So then what, okay, well, if the, in that case, if DB beta as spotlight is good, where does it lack? What does it lack? Where would it not do, where would it come short compared to gate? Entities which are not there in the Not there in the So it's purely, you know, um, is limited to what is already there, right, in that knowledge base. So one is, yes. Can you explain gate a bit more? So gate is a general purpose toolkit, one of the uh, most, um, Here is the you know uh, uh, the site that tells you the gate system, right? and um, uh, it is used for a whole bunch of uh, let's see what something different here, right? So I, I wasn't aware of this, but when they combine it onto text, that is, you know, different than what I yeah. originally talked to Gate about. Okay, um, so, um, so, Is basically text processing software. Where are the tools? There? Is does everybody know where I can see individual um, flowers? They provide many functionalities. Yes, we can show. Yeah, if you look at this here, you can see the default, you know, kind of annotations. Here is your text, right? and the kind of annotations that it can do. By the way, they are not limited to English. So you can see this is a, I think, Arabic text. And uh, here you can see cardinal, date, event. I don't know what is GPE. Does anyone know what is GPE? Money, nationality, right? So what happens is that to be able to do that, how, how do they get that? Do you know? How would, you, how would they be able to recognize something as a money? Here they identify location, see, but you didn't see. So, um, it will, you know, to be able to uh, get to, you know, uh, some of these capabilities, they will have to also do machine learning, train. Right? So, they would manually tag uh, documents for money and train, mm -hmm. and then this will uh, identify those items as training. But you can see here, whole again, a uh, whole bunch of stuff. Entity, happening, situation, timeline, and you can see there's date here, so they, they try to, and you, there is a, a whole workflow. So this is the, this is a very low level thing. You see here, there's a passing and part of speech tagging.
Okay, any, uh, I hope uh, uh, that kind of give you some basic thing, right? And it is in a way general architecture. So not more things can be done in a custom way also. Okay. If you do, for example, um, uh, let me show you another. If you look at Stanford NLP, here you can see the kind of stuff they do. Parser, part of speech tagging, name entity recognizer, word segmenter, classifier, and so and so in, in some more things. Right? And there's also temporal tagger. And some of them can be packaged together. So these are the various uh, these are various NLP tools, right? Now, when you compare any of these solution of Stanford, uh, you know NLP versus um, uh, uh, Gate, and you saw several many of these examples, right? Um, um, they are they are pre-built, you know, entity types that they can identify. You can create your own. In, in, in spite of that, though, you are still not going to come up with the expansive set that, let's say, DBPDI would have. But on the other hand, DBPDI would not necessarily have. Here you will find the name of a person that is not well known. And DBPDI wouldn't have that. Right? Did I answer you? Okay, anybody else wants to add something? So, um, there's some interesting discussion here, right? I hope you guys read. Can you explain this? Anything interesting about news? Anybody wants to? It talks about faceted search and the images. That's very interesting. I don't think anyone has talked about that. Mm -hmm. So what is this, uh, uh, Sarsi, um, what is this uniqueness? Uh, what, 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 what do you think the author is trying to convey here with Syria and the classical court of Moscow's? Something happened on a particular city. Mm. 
So what I think what he tries to say, it can get that uh, broader idea by using if, if the if some keyword appears in all the all the albums, then it is a more, it is the generic topic that it aligns to. And if there are some specific entities which is specific only to the album, it is something about a specific entity. So, so this, what is the what is the broad idea here, Nishita? Something that Sarasi just said. What is the corollary? Explain it a bit. Uh, in a, uh, what does it get in it? Like uh, classifying an image, like it says for the keyword Syria, for example, the album. No, interpret the. In, interpret. Um, I think there is something. Uh, I think what Sarasi said can be rephrased in a different way. I think I discussed that in class before. I don't know whether you do want to make a connection or not. Fundamentally, here's a page. And um, it is possible that there is some structure to the page. Structure in the sense that um, it so happens that a part of the page deals with the same general theme, Syria. It's also possible that some other parts has actually multiple different topics. And I think what, you know, an interesting observation here that is made is that you might be able to, you know, segment all these images, all the content on the thing, whereby some of them are correlated. And if so, you can exploit the correlationship along them. Others are all distinct. And thereby, you are limited metadata you can produce by for that. So um, it's not that not that this is that easy per se, not that it can be used in all the case, but at least the idea that you may be able to exploit structure for semantic, semantic meaning understanding, meaning or, you know when you correlate something, you are saying that they are related, right? So that that gives you a good view. If you are interested in this, you may be interested in this. And, 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 and fundamentally, what I try to explain to you is that think along the line of three S's: syntax, structure, and semantics. And one one thing that I hope and expect from each of you is a clear understanding of what this is. What is syntax? What is structure or representation or formatting? What is semantics? And a very interesting point, very important point that. I tried to convey to you with earlier discussions when I talked about some examples from my keynote and other, that you can use Q at the lower level. Lower meaning syntax is the lower, lowest level, then structure, and then semantics. You can use syntax. For example, you can use um, uh, a regular expression way analysis, or you can use tag in the as in the physical tagging of XML as a way to go to the semantic, uh, uh, you know, to, to, to understand, to, to, to get to semantics. You can understand structure of a page, whether to say that something that appears, a word that appears in the title is more important compared to the same word appearing in the, uh, somewhere down on the page. So that is a structural property, where on the page it appears. And when that is used to guess that something is more important than other. That's again, you exploiting structural information for semantic. Right? That is a fundamental thing. See, ultimately, uh, what you want to take away with this is uh, fundamental principles that you can apply in, in your situation. So that fundamental principle here is to understand syntax, structure, and semantics, to understand that you can exploit syntactic features to get structural information, you can or semantic information, you can get structural information to map to semantic information. What would you call the inherently? There is one thing that I kind of have left out actually in these three S's. And let me explain that I have left out what, what I have left out. What I left out is uh, that when you are doing some training. Fundamentally, what is happening? 
there is one more s that is happening what does when you say learning machine learning what is the learning there what does, what 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 does the algorithm learn really think about it in a very intuitive way it's very important all of you understand that yeah you can learn this toolkit and use wake up what is fundamentally happening here who knows lsa or lsi latent semantic indexing or analysis what is fundamentally happening what is lsa based on That's fine. But what is the fundamental uh, computational function? Cosine. What is the cosine of? It's a vector. What is the vector made up of? Words. The terms. Some. Words. How did you get there? So now, if you think about what it does, cosine is what? Statistics. Statistics. Essentially, yeah. this whole thing is about getting certain type of statistics. That this word, when it appears here, in context with other words, it is probably that. The wiring that is happening in the machine learning algorithm, as a, just as the wiring happens in our brain, is that essentially it is um, in uh, the, you, you know in, in uh, you can't completely explain everything this way. But a lot of basic things you can explain this way is that you are saying what words occur in proximity what. Now you take different different machine learning techniques. So let's take HMM. Right? What is HMM? Hidden Markov, Hidden Markov model. Right? What the things would be what is the probability that when this word appears, it is followed by this word? And followed by this word is the second position. And if and why would why would HMM be a good uh, technique for uh, 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 extraction of phrases? Why? Do you understand the corollary of this? Phrases is a, a series of words in a particular order, and when you can say the conditional probability of one word followed by where and that is very high, you can say that's probably a phase. It occurs all the time. Right? Those probabilities, the cosine function is also a physical thing. Right? So they are all cousins, in fact, if you think about it, uh, um, a computational linguistics for the whole thing, machine learning, many aspects of NLP. These are all cousins of forms. And the important thing, you know, those of you who will be more successful than others in a would really figure out this association. That it's not important that you can use HMM, but you need to know why would you use HMM? When would you use HMM? And that is easier to know once you have figured out this intuition that LSI is fundamentally doing different statistics than HMM. What it is, and, and then you say, oh, well, it's no brainer that for phase identification this works very well. at the quality of reviews here.
So uh, here I am going to challenge you guys. One review is certainly much more detailed than others. I do want you to read that and tell me whether the long review actually conveys uh, and gives the right interpretation of. So let me uh, try to. Uh, here, here is here is your challenge. This is what I will give you on. For example, this one says, this paper is terrible. Now, uh, you know, I, I don't think that, um, uh, uh, I think you, are, you can decide for yourself. I'm, I'm pretty sure there are language improvements that can be done on that. But you can decide for yourself whether you are able to understand that or not. Uh, and I, you need to interpret, uh, you know, and I, what I expect from you guys is here, uh, uh, the first one says article is very well written, understanding of semantics, right, high level of understanding of semantics, blah, blah, blah. Although I, I, I wish that review was done uh, better than what it is, but at least there's some opinion is clearly there. Number two says, and the number three also says, in this language at times is incomprehensible, which is bad. But conceptually, it is good. And now there, 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 there are some things said about it. Clearly, I think that both of them have failed. In fact, all the three of them have failed to capture the discussions we just have had. Right? So now, you have to uh, make up your mind when you read this, whether you agree with them, whether the discussion in the class helped you understand better and appreciate pluses and minuses of this, um, uh, you know, submission, and uh, you know, rate these reviewers. It depends on the individual reviewer how they are viewing the paper, what mindset they are having, and what kind of things they are looking for. Mm. So, what I think is broadly that uh, it should be reviewed according to what is written, not according to what is missing. Yeah, I think uh, the reviewer pointed out the dead link uh, based on the fact that he assumes that it does some automatic knowledge based generation. That's why he pointed out the dead Are we sure this review matches the paper? Because are we sure this reviewer was reviewing the right paper? Because like the automatic knowledge base, I mean, it looks like he might have been looking at the wrong paper. Maybe got the copy and pasted wrong. Uh, I think uh, uh, I, I I think it does. Uh, uh, so um, because otherwise uh, he he should have told me that uh, I put it in the wrong place. No, I think uh, I think this is the only article that talks about Wikipedia. So. There is a clearly use of knowledge base here in this uh, uh, article uh, in the submission because you know that use of Wikipedia or DBT spotlight that is a knowledge base of sorts. So there is something, and I believe that that is what this reviewer uh, is you know uh, commenting on. So it probably is the right. It is for this one. Uh, let's assume that when you grade it, uh, and I, I'll send you an email or put post on it if the author says no, I put it in wrong place, and I'll correct myself and tell you know that no, this is wrong place. But as far as I know. Um, 
you also need to see. I do not think that. Um, so so um, by and large, I did not expect anybody to use in, in image analysis anyway. Uh, now, if somebody uses, I have no problem. I would. Um, uh, and somebody shows how image analysis will be used, especially for semantic object ex extraction. I don't have any problem. For example, I talked to you about uh, modeling of object in MPEG-4 as an example, as a way where it, you can store that exact metadata. But I never told you how you would uh, reliably compute uh, the image analysis, right? But I did tell you about, you remember the flower figure I showed you? And the, uh, so the, the, we, we talked a little bit about that very broadly, but that's not primarily what is uh, expected. In fact, by and large, those people who work in this uh, um, um, field know that uh, image analysis is actually not used in image search. So look at Google search engine, which does image analysis. And for many simple queries, you get good results. Try doing flower in Google search engine, you get pretty good results. Right? And yet, try re reading up about uh, uh, how um, uh, Google works. Things might have changed recently, and I can't be too sure because nobody, they don't publish it, and nobody can keep up with it. But I do know that first six, seven, eight years of Google, they did not use any image analysis, even when their image processing was reasonably good. Bing does not, did not use any image analysis. I think the exception is when they let you search by image. Mm -hmm. What? You can drag an image onto the search bar search and drop it there, and then they find similar images based on like the uh, pixel pattern. Right, right. For similarity search, yes. Yeah. So, the, so, so what it is that um, in the image processing, when you want for some sort of similarity, when you want to look for structure, uh, 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 composition, color, texture, that is very doable, right? And algorithms for them are very good. But to say that in that image there is a, that image is a photograph of Revati, that's very hard, without having trained for Revati. Right? So how does, but if you do a search on many of the people in the noises, you'll get their photographs. But it has not done any image processing to get those photographs, has it? No. It knows the home page. And there's a photograph on the home page, so it assumes it is the photograph of the person, right? Or caption. Right? And not just that. A lot more important is that two photographs have similar you know, uh, uh, features and have the same tags. So we'll move on. IL2. So uh, clearly there's something is picked up. Uh, somebody has paid attention to the annotation aspects. Very interesting. Good forensic job. Right? Did you see this before? Did you understand this? Somebody paid some attention. Understand this? Who wants to explain this part? Oops. You search the page source, looking for the href image source tag link name. So it's an interesting new way to capture metadata, right? It's also how you can download the image directly. You can get to the image 
Well, the, uh, the point is it's um, using the links to find relevant data uh, about this data. That's, that's interesting, right? Mm -hmm. Very often, this, you, know, you can get further expression not just in what is in that document, but so, so the first point here was interesting in that it talked about going in within the object image object in this case. In the other case, it gave you saying, hey, additional information can be found by following some link. Right? That's powerful. Uh, in 1996, I had introduced the concept of MREF. Um, I used to have a student, uh, I had a student whose name is uh, Selvam Velmurugan. And um, uh, you would, uh, often uh, come across you know, a web page where a uh, photograph, uh, 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 more information about XYZ is here. And the here has a hypertext link. Now you want to understand what is here. There are two ways to understand that. What are those two ways? That is what this thing says here, yeah? right? Am I right? Really? Then the second one is more understand the NLP. I mean, you know, under the NLP, more information about XYZ is here. Here is for XYZ. Is that what uh, would that fall under the category dependency parsing? What? Is that considered a dependency? Yeah. Now, which one is easier? On a, in, a, in, a, um, um, in a general case. to some structure or well-known or high quality content mm -hmm. or you know the link and just look at page rank. Page rank is high. So you can believe the quality of info is good, potentially. The page is uh, at, a, at, a, at a site that is uh, like Wikipedia or community created, that means it is going to have a title. Then you know where to look at the most important information, right? the title. Name of the page, category. These things you just look at two, three main important. You don't need to look at the whole page. That would be very easy. But if it's arbitrary web page, it's going to be hard. Okay. So it all depends. Thing to understand is why search engine is so complicated. The other very important thing, those of you who are really interested in some of these things, is to understand what are the trade-offs in the breadth versus depth, in the scalability versus specificity, and you know. So you cannot say that, hey, we discussed 10 different things here which Google does not do, and so Google is not that good. No, you can't say that easily either. Because you also then, the question we don't ask very often is, can we do it in a very scalable way? Can we do it in a very generic page? I only give you three examples of the documents. 
the job that Google had, the reason that uh, Tali was able to do a lot better than Google was again uh, that it had it had ability to manage um, the information sources, and Google was doing the entire web. So I I never wanted to say that Tali is better than Google, and I can also say Tali is better than Google in certain contexts for certain things. So there are always this trade-off. There's no one size fits all. You see this metadata of the page stuff? How many of you have used schema.org? Not many, right? Discuss a lot more here. Other than this author, who has uh, uh, who has looked at this? Did anybody look at it? This paper. So tell me. Uh, who wants to explain uh, how has this author used this work, semantic image segmentation object labeling, in the explanation? But that's not what this, this uh, 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 citation number three is about. Submission that exactly you said. Sanjay, did you find something? It's about uh, so what it says is uh, it tries to uh, segment images and uh, detect what are the uh, objects that you can find. And uh, so before that, this submission uh, discusses about how to use. Uh, details such as uh, file names and captions. Now it uh, tries to analyze the, ima uh, analyze the images and uh, uh, tries to extract uh, what features are there, such uh, as uh, faces or objects. So for that, uh, this, uh, according to this uh, submission, it says in this paper, they propose a method that, uh, that can be uh, used to utilize uh, image objects and uh, are there in an image. So that's how uh, 
this paper tries to use Devit, you want to explain for anything further here? So, I think what the author is trying to say is in the previous section, um, the author says that we try to extract all of the information from the caption and going to the hyperlink and all of that. And uh, if you don't get entity information from there, you can also do an image analysis and try to get content information from there. And then together you could use this information along with that information to uh, accurately identify. So what kind of con information you can get from content analysis though? So you can get uh, like the example, right? I mean, as in, is it a map, is it a landscape or a monument or something mm -hmm. like that? And does it match with what uh, entity identification you've done or the caption or the description of the image? So you use this information in collaboration with that other information to accurately identify It's actually ambitious, but it wasn't good, right? It's hard, but uh, generic search engine uh, finding something out of the image by analyzing the image is hard because even the pattern mining kind of thing would tell you that what are different segments of image, but finding what exactly that segment That is what the Google image search and all of that. It's but here we have a background user. knowledge saying yeah. that okay, this image is of this type. And once you once you search for some images like landscapes or things like that, it can go to the index of all the landscapes that it has identified before and create those landscapes. So um, once you are certain, the certain image is for certain object. You could use that as a basis of making judgment about whether other potentially candidate image are, you can increase the confidence that other candidate image are for the same thing. Suppose you, your person, you know, your Einstein's photograph, some of them are very good, they are marked Einstein, you for sure Einstein's photographs. And then you find face, you know, images that are poor in quality, whatever, so you could, and for whatever reason, they were, they were uh, images by themselves, there's not much text available. You could not by itself do it, but because you have, in, in, in some sense, a training set of high quality images, you could do that. But how, I mean, first step itself, how would we get to know that uh, this image would be, like, for this, for the image would have the person, or image would have a landscape. Mm. How, how can we reach that? So you can reach that level, uh, okay. I Does think that's what the, the paper that has been quoted, I think that's what it says, that mm -hmm. that level of expertise has been reached by that paper, that you can accurately identify whether it's a monument or a person. Or I mean, a, by looking at the image or by Just looking by at Just by doing the image analysis. Like the, number, the pixel, right, the color densities. Let me just kind of, so you are asking a question that you would normally have. And in this case, look at the paper that is advanced in state of the art. If when I don't want to intervene and you want to make your judgment, the proposition here is that the author has actually found <coughs> one that could potentially could be used for such a Purpose. What what he or she claims it can be used because there is no one. You sitting here without any knowledge in that field have legitimate questions that this is generally you know intuitively hard. So and actually, yet I there have is a world round class. Have you looked at this paper? No, not about this paper. Mm -hmm. I have worked for pattern mining mm -hmm. and I have worked for image analysis. That mm -hmm. how can you identify different portion in it? So that itself is a really challenging. It is. So we, after doing that, yeah. identifying, after identifying portions of image, 
identifying what exactly that portion is, it, I'm not saying it's not doable. I'm just saying in terms of scalability of mm -hmm. a generic search engine, mm -hmm. it's hard. Uh, good point. So now I'll give you homework so that we all feel very good. For you. Look at that reference and put up a message uh, not more longer than paragraph to say that in the context of that this author has said uh, how that work can be used, what did you find after looking at the paper? It's good that you have some background already, so now you'll be able to tell us better once you have looked at the paper, right? Okay. Good. All right, so uh, we have uh, here OG7 uh, comments that um, <laughs> okay uh, that author misses existence of important semantics in Yahoo photo gallery page which is categorization of the photo this will definitely this will definitely uh, poor English here but this this can definitely help to improve the accuracy of annotation of photo captions since categorization can be used to identify the domain. Okay. So there are quite a few criticism that this particular reviewer has. So, um, mm, does uh, anybody want to bring out issue from the reviewers? You don't have to be the reviewer be yourself, but based on what you see. I think uh, one of the reviews said uh, that the author has deviated from the theme of the assignment when it comes to the news and an article. I think uh, this is something we discussed right at the beginning, yes. that some mm -hmm. of us Understood. interpreted your link as, okay, do we have to um, understand the semantics of the news and link itself, or other articles which are written in the, annotated in the news and format. So I think this particular reviewer took it in the other uh, aspect, whereas the author wrote about articles which are annotated in New Zealand. Okay. So that's one differentiation. I think, uh, I th uh, as far as I'm concerned, that is a reasonable, uh, uh, in this, the view that this author has taken is acceptable. So I think one of the reviews had issues with um, with updating the background knowledge. I think the author uh, talked about also using a background knowledge and what if the existing background knowledge does not have an entity that you are identifying, you have identified now. So when you're using uh, named entity recognition in uh, also along with uh, DBPDA spotlight or something like that. So if you come up, you come across an entity that is already not there in the knowledge base, then you can actually use that opportunity to update the knowledge base with what you're getting. 
So I think the reviewer was contradicting that as to that is not possible. Well, you see, at this point, um, I didn't ex uh, just the fact that some of you guys, not all, but some of you who recognize that you can use background knowledge, I think that is credible. I don't think that, um, I didn't expect um, um, that uh, you have to uh, discuss all the challenges in doing so, such as consistency or correct quality or um, recency, you know, uh, how accurate is knowledge base. Those are advanced issues um, that obviously is not asked for. So going, I think doing, doing that kind of criticism is a bit going overboard in my view. It's okay you do it. It's not, I'm not, you know, not a big deal, but I just feel that, uh, you know, we need to be able to discern what is important, what is what is the primary thing, what is the first level of, uh, 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 you know, uh, discussion as opposed to the second degree of information per se. But anyway, okay, go ahead. All right, I think that's uh, enough of that. So uh, somebody wanted to speak up for the author here. Um, and the rest you guys have to decide yourself. All right, uh, we will go to um, IN4, where is IN3? It's a bow on. So, Nishita, um, you want to uh, make some comments here? Mm -hmm. Have you read the submission? Mm -hmm. part what is discussed is about the TechCrunch article and he, he or she has clearly defined what is the entities and they focus about scalability aspect here like what will help to make uh, a faster search or something of that sort. Mm. Mm. from the search engine based on that sentence and uh, so it has a I, I take it as a hypothesis so if you look it's at a like sentence in the article yeah. and it generates all the possible questions, questions that you can ask, ask based on the should that article be pulled up or what all questions should result so, so it's so now uh, so, so that you know um, I think that um, that's a very legitimate thing in fact the search engines do mm -hmm. compute now that it, it's not probably not the way you discuss here you need to you need to have the data to do that right well what happens here is that your question 
So this gives some answers. For such as this knows which one you picked on. When you after after answers, you go to the first page to get you click on the result, right? So since you can pay, you know uh, knows by redirection, you see that any link that is there, there's a redirection through Google. So when you click on it, Google first records who what you click and then takes you to the page. Right? So now you can uh, now you know that for this question, uh, consumers users prefer this, and from that, next time you will, if more as more and more people you see you uh, uh, you know bring that answer higher up. Of course, it should be in the realm of the thing before even you can put it as a possible uh, candidate and learn from that. Course, and, and, and doing applying this algorithm for news item, which can change more frequently, is more challenging, and there's a lot of other things you have to think about. Alan, you want to add something? Yeah, I think when they do that, the most important thing is to find out which link was the last link that a given user has visited, because that implies that. So yeah, it's kind of like an implicit voting scheme to get it to the top. So the third review is brutal here. Docker doesn't seem to understand the process of indexing and searching well. Do you understand what is the last point that uh, this uh, review is saying? For example, usable document contains sequence of four elements. Yeah. The other it described when it about the new SML article. Huh. So I think this last point clearly explains how you can use the new SML article, how you can index the new SML article. Mm. It describes that. Okay. So I think that's. One thing that's missing yeah. in the submission. Yeah, submission. Right? Yeah. Are we discussing OH eight? Why? I thought we were discussing one and three. Mm. One and three. Okay. All right. Any other things you want to pick out? Alin, you've been very quiet.
things you want to achieve? Actually, uh, this like uh, they first talk about like uh, they are categorizing the information actually, and uh, you did not read it, right? Yes. Sir. Hmm. Um, the author started with the uh, image processing thing and it says the, it talks about a lot of the entities while processing the images like geospatial stuff and uh, how will you segregate the data, the data, uh, the image is all about what on the basis of some entities like he has given some example up in here. of the content information that is available. The information of the images that is given as in a form of caption or whatever, uh, within it, title, assets, and then it's processing the images, like the time or date of creation, and give us an example of template as well, the kind of template the images uses, and on the basis of that, it's uh, extracting the information. stuff we've already talked about before, but you know, they talked about doing the named entity recognition and looking up those entities, um, you know, using the meta tags at the end of the TechCrunch article to help in the co-opting entities. Did you notice in the news XML it says the highlighted data in bold text? Pardon? It says that the highlighted in bold text with colors and important information is searchable based on it. Looks like they're trying to in the news ML. Probably a good point. Like, could you search the document and see if, uh, if the author had like tagged or highlighted certain words? Because those would usually be. Uh, I, I think it's. Yeah. Well, uh, the. That's the an interesting concept, though, because if you the, look the, at the highlight is typically not in the text, you know, the document itself, right? The source it um, should be. Mm, so so. Um, Usually in the metadata standard, uh, it doesn't say that highlight, uh, you know, title or highlight this and that is decided by the uh, site that actually puts up the results. Mm -hmm. They may decide, some may decide to highlight the 12 point, other decide to highlight 14 points, that, that that's, you know. Oh yeah, for sure, but if you look at the page source, the page source tag should have a highlight or a bold in front of it. Right. Yes. Yeah, so the when, you say that, when you see that page source, that is a page source of the site that the is site showing you. That's not necessarily the uh, news level document that that uh, site got it. Yeah, sure, okay, so, sure, yeah, I was thinking like if, if you were to like make that idea conceptually, you go to web pages and you see that that web page has like highlighted that part or tagged it, the author probably has like said to tag that. So it'd be like a point of you know, emphasis in the article. But, but news ML won't do that. In the news ML, you don't have that uh, facility uh, and to say that emphasize using uh, style sheet command or anything of that. Yeah, I mean, not like, so stepping away from the user mail, just saying like using that basic concept to approach like a kind of semantic kind of algorithm on a web page, like any, any kind of web page. Mm. Like approaching that, looking at the text that's highlighted. I mean, it could use some more information. If you use that, but... Uh, if you use it for not the XML page, but use yeah. the approach that like... That will not be a big old user mail uh, part, but... Yeah, I'm not using the concept. Other kind of thing, yes. Like use the concept later on. Yeah. 
Yeah. You give us in this part, Nishida, can you explain? Did you, do you think that this author talks about you know, using of structural features, highlights anywhere? Does this particular submission talk about uh, use of, so, uh, you know, this is, uh, look at this, the term structured data refers to, uh, you know, the formatted information, right? Mm -hmm. Now, how is that exploited? How is that exploited to uh, extract semantics? How is that explaining this submission? Uh, I mean, uh news article, uh, I mean, it's uh, uh, referring to the news ML link that was provided to us where uh, yeah. it looks like the author is looking at the particular URL provided and that the information there is in a structured format. So tags within that like uh, description tag or something like that these kind of tags holds information and it will help us for the content to be searchable. Okay. Interesting, clear understanding of semantics here. Let's look at this sentence here. Structural metadata lets the engine know the document structure as XML and the domain it belongs to can be inferred. It along it also helps the concept extraction similarity processing. How? Does anybody say how? going on a very uh, so like to, if you use that to infer that it belongs to a domain of markup language I mean you don't need to do that uh, you don't need any knowledge base for that you know, angular brackets and you know, <laughs> pure syntactic pictures are able to know that you guys to, um, um, there are three or four more left, so um, let us make that as an assignment. I think we've done a lot of discussions here, but you guys need to look at it. Here is what would happen after, uh, so um, let's say, how about today is Tuesday, uh, Thursday, right? So how about, uh, um, would, be, would the end of Sunday be a good time when you would be able to submit all your, uh, uh, you're going to rank, uh, you know, 
submissions and uh, each of the reviews, right? And uh, I'm going to personally call, call up some of you to question why you rank something as you did. So, so it's, it's not just um, uh, that you going to say these are the top five, so I'm giving them A and they say no. I want you to have, I, I, at least anecdotally, at least in one sentence, at least in one point, explain your rationale. Right. It should be very clear cut in a clear, concise um, explanation saying, you know, the reviewer totally missed the point of what the submission said because the submission said this are the semantic things and you doesn't think it's semantics and I disagree with you, so I'm giving the reviewer D. Or you say, well, I think the reviewer actually explained things better than uh, the submission itself. Uh, in fact, the reviewer pointed out all these things you could have done and so I give it A. So, but I want you to know what you are saying and why you are saying it and not just write it up, you know. So, uh, I'm, I'm, I want you to be able to defend it. I thought we were ranking the reviews. Are we grading the reviews? Mm. Yeah, yeah, you're going to give each review A, B, C, D, uh, F. So do we need to grade the article and also we need to grade each response of because you can read the reviews and you're going to make up the, you know, uh, thing. See, by now you actually have a, a fairly decent idea, I hope, uh, of all the possible things, or all the good, you know, things that most of the articles have. And uh, a number of them, we decided, we, dis we did not discuss in depth all the uh, uh, negative points in the submissions as much. We, uh, but uh, we did look at a whole sort of things you could do. I gave you some principles. I, we talked about machine learning and we talked about statistics and stru syntax structure and semantics and we you know, uh, talked about rule of knowledge basis and we talked about many, many important concepts at the time. We talked about the fact that here the focus is on these three types of content, not so much about the entire uh, web and scalability. So it's okay if you focus on those things. Um, yeah, so you have this is a picture of all the stuff. No, none of the submissions uh, have um, uh, uh, everything that we can, you know, we, we, that we could have expected for a perfect answer. But there are clearly three, four, five that uh, seem to explain a clear understanding of the principles. Uh, and those I feel are, uh, are very good. I'm going to match your review with my own uh, review, so, and then I'm particularly going to uh, uh, call up those whose reviews uh, really deviant, de deviate most from mine and have you explain to me. That's the <laughs> process I will use. That will not happen either. Huh? <laughs> that will not happen? <laughs> Why? I, I might write in here. The task is to find out what is there. <laughs> <laughs> the best way to is to use the principles I have. I think hardly All right. So um, uh, our, our next class, uh, Tuesday. Oh, tomorrow. In this meeting room, uh, we have a lecture from a visitor. Uh, I'll post it uh, on the group if you've not seen it. But uh, 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 Doctor came up for an in you. Um, Anybody interested in the topic of this class should be interested in that if you can. So um, uh, I'll, I'll put that up, uh, uh, you know, but uh, uh, how many of you can join? Uh, and those who are not in Oasis per se, but uh, uh, you, you know, there'll be some pizza at the end of it. <laughs> 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 so what time is it? 11. 11 to 12. 30. So try to uh, come if you really learn a lot on the semantic web per se, which we did not discuss in a whole lot of detail. And um, um, she has very successful students herself. Um, she happens to be my former student, uh, but now known in her own rights, and, and uh, I, I, I have my students learn from her, so she's very good. Um, one of her students is going for internship, Riley Watson. Uh, 
Um, and uh, so, see, you know, if you have just an RDF, query processing, number of you know issues good for. So, uh, also remember, 10th of uh, April, we have Chris Velty, um, you know, distinguished speaker, and uh, uh, in the uh, you know on the second floor where we have this uh, open space, uh, we'll have um, uh, his talk on uh, IBM Watson and Jeopardy. Then later on in the evening, afternoon, if you want to, anybody else is interested, uh, let me know. Uh, he'll be talking about Watson and healthcare, medicine, use of Watson. And we'll have a round table discussion here, most likely around 3.30 on 10th of uh, April. So, um, uh, but at least that public talk, try not to miss that. It's going to be a fantastic thing. Uh, uh, it's, a, it's a conversation piece when you go most places these days. So try and, try and come up there. Uh, and next Tuesday, uh, I want you all to be able to talk about the progress of your project. And I will call you up saying, please discuss that. You go and discuss that. Um, uh, I don't want you to do too much preparation other than what you are just, you know what we are doing, right? So you, what you should be able to do is to open up your uh, project description. You should extend it if you can. You should put a more figure or something that will help you explain. Yes, you should make an update to your milestone. Catch up, make sure what you have achieved and what you want to do next. That is the minimum thing you need to be able to explain. That uh, here is all the things we need to do. Uh, and I have done this, my, you know, here's my teammate, he or she has done this. We are on track, we are not in track. If you're not in track, I, I will ask you what can I do to help you. Right? So that will be uh, next Tuesday. That's it, we don't have too much time left. Three weeks, yeah. That's, that's going to go fast. Last week of class, yes, all the